Hey YouTube, what goes on? And welcome to this episode of Action Figures, bringing you X-Files, episode six, Cold Vengeance. That's right, the X-Men anime series rewatch show is back for our sixth episode. Have another very special guest here with us tonight. We'll let him in here momentarily. He's getting the figs ready in the green room. Uh, but before we get to any of that, um, I don't want to forget to mention this later on. This Saturday, New Jersey Toy Con. Very excited to be going to that show. We talked about it last night on Live at 7.05, our weekly live stream, where we talked about G.I. Joe Classified. We talked about the new Marvel Legends Wave. We talked about ALF. All sorts of great toy news this week. Had to go live at 7.05. And then I watched this really awesome show afterwards called Between Two Sentinels. Hmm. Why would that be the lead-in? I'll tell you why it's the lead-in. Because we have a very special guest this week. We have a fig photographer known throughout the land. We have a guy who I'll see on Saturday, and I'm looking forward to it. We got a guy whose numbers rival AEW wrestling on a Wednesday night on TBS. That's right. We have with us tonight the great Matthew Toy. Here he is, folks. Give it up for him. What's up, guys? Hey, man. Shout out to Beard Builds for this awesome sign that I just got today. That is an awesome, and it's big. It's got some like mm -hmm. some size to it, man. Yeah, it, it, is it really heavy? good job. No, it, it's really light. Um, I can actually use it for you know, I'll put it in the background or some shots. Uh, I'll bring it to the uh, convention on Saturday and Sunday, so you could check it out there. Very nice, man. Well, thank you so much for joining us. That I know you're a busy guy, so I appreciate you carving out the time uh, here to come on the show and talk about the anime made series. Yeah. It's funny that like you told me which episode we we're gonna watch, and then I was like, "All right, let me." I woke up this morning. I was like, "Let me, let me like rewatch that episode," and apparently I had done like a re. I had started a rewatch also, and I ended like I left my I left halfway in that episode. That's so, incredible. Perfect. When I saw that message today while I was at work. I thought you were messing with me. I was like, "That is too serendipitous yeah. to make lots of sense." Like, you can't hope, and it's that's ironic because obviously last week we had Jay shot on the show. So, mm -hmm. you know, had I had you on last week and Jay shot this week, that obviously wouldn't have happened. So it's just, yeah, yeah. it's it's crazy. Life is weird and strange, right? Mm -hmm. It's not the coincidences and ironies that make life worth living every day. All right, Matthew. Well, before we get into it here, let's say hello to people who are in the chat, hanging out this week uh rat james Ratface is in the house james great review last night of the new gi joe classified super pumped to have checked that out sir uh matthew four feathers is here oh hey what's up four feathers in the house i believe he's also going on saturday so looking forward to seeing four feathers on saturday okay cool yeah, yeah. jay shot and i also have a, a sticker pack that we'll be handing out there so nice. yeah make sure you pick that up Look at that, getting the behind-the-scenes goodness on the Saturday show here on X-Files. Uh, Lucas is in the house. What's going on, Luke? How you doing, sir? What is up, man? All right, guys. So I'll tell you what. Oh, so some more stuff going on down here, too. Uh, some more chats going on. Sorry, I'm always bad at scrolling. i got to get better at that. Uh, you're welcome, James. No problem, sir. So, Matthew, I'll tell you what, sir. Before we get into this episode, i got to ask you, because I ask everybody every week, what does this great classic X-Men, the M8 series cartoon show, mean to you because it's really influenced a lot of us in our collecting and the people we are today what's it mean to you sir so that i mean it defines my saturday mornings right like most of us um yeah the, one of my favorite shows watching as a kid that spider-man and what was it batman the animated series like fox had had an awesome lineup um i originally was introduced to the x-men through my sister she had showed me the what was it, the uh, the, the first like pilot episode. Um, it wasn't a pilot episode, but it was like it was from the eighties. Uh, Pride, Pride of the X Men. Okay, Kitty Pride. The Kitty Pride one, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. The one so that I, the video game is based off of. Yes. Yeah. The, the one. The one that the video. Yeah. The video game. I actually have a video game cabinet up there. I should have grabbed that. Um. So as she 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 introduced me to that. All I knew was like Batman at the time. So like when I first saw that, I was like, what's going on here? Why is because I I confused Batman with Wolverine. So I was like, why does Batman have claws coming out of his gloves? And then like, who's the guy who has the goggles that shoots the lasers? I thought all like all their powers were coming from their costumes. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I have to admit, really quick, 
Uh, yet no, you didn't know at the time you were actually channeling Amlegon Comics years later where we got a Wolverine combined with Batman for Dark Claw. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. You, I remember that. you, were, you were seeing into the future in that moment, sir. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and, it's uh, a great show. My favorite, if, if, I, I don't know if you're going to ask me, but I'm going to hop ahead of you. Yeah. My favorite X-Men um, is actually Cyclops. There he is. And all of his Boy Scout glory. I love it. I love that new shot, by the way, right there. I saw you talking about it last night. Yeah, thank you. That's this is actually awesome. J-Shot's idea. That's great. Is that the uh, cell shaded or the Jim Lee? This is the cell shaded. It actually replaced my Mafex Jim Lee. There you go, man. Wow, mm -hmm. replacing a Mafex. That says mm -hmm. something for sure. Yeah, that's, it's that that was tough for me. Like I I got into collecting more imports first before I got into like Hasbro. So um when I took off the Mafex one and put it in the into storage, I was just like, oh, I can't believe I'm actually doing this. <laughs> you know, <you're laughs> it's, playing in the background, right? Mm -hmm. bum, bum, bum. Yeah. Exactly. I, I like I know people like want that figure. I would sell it, but I've done some modifications to it that I don't know if I should even bother selling it. So, yeah. well, it's one of those things too. Down the road, you might want to mix and match, and even mm -hmm. comparisons and things like that. Um, I want to just really quickly mention Pack Photos here in the house. He's an alumni here at the show as well. Yeah, shout out to him though because he sent me a WrestleMania 12 Shawn Michaels figure and uh, the what was it the DX. Uh, Triple H, where he has the army gear, mm -hmm. which I which was missing in my collection. I have I actually put Sean up on the shelf back there. I don't have that much Attitude Era stuff. It's mostly like new generation. So, All right. very nice, very nice. Yes, I I dabble in the WWE stuff. I mm -hmm. primarily more of an AEW collector at this point. So. Um, I have a lot of those figures also, but I don't have them displayed. I actually, because I want to do shots with them, so they're actually in the other room in a bin. Nice. That's actually a really cool run they did, too, where mm -hmm. they slowly released all those DX figures in the camo. Mm -hmm. We got X-Pac, we, we got Triple H, we got Badass Billy Gunn. Seeing all those drop from that classic tank photo was pretty cool. Yeah, and then also, I didn't realize that they're all, like, they have their actual, like, wrestling gear underneath the camo. So that's that was pretty cool too. I didn't know that either. I think I only own, I think I saw X Pac for like six bucks at a Target. Yeah. So, so I think that's in a box somewhere. I never opened it because I, I just don't have much of an elite section. But I was like, for six bucks, I need that, right? Yeah, and it's basically two figures because you have them in the army gear, and then you also have them in a singlet. Nice, and that's essentially uh, maybe a GI Joe classified crossover down the road, having him yeah. in the with them, right? Mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. Well, I'll tell you what, let's get into looking at this episode here and see what goes on. Um, so as always, everybody, uh, I do want to point out that we encourage participation. You know, the more you want to put in the chat, the more you want to take place, you know, with us here in conversation while we go through, please feel free to do so. Uh, we really want participation. As I said in previous weeks, I look at this like Oprah's book club. I'm <laughs> like, you know what? Watch an episode. If you haven't seen the show before, and that's your first time checking it out, even better to experience mm -hmm. it with friends and other people. If you're just doing a rewatch because you haven't watched it in a long time. And again, we're doing this because all of us are very excited uh, with the expectation and anticipation of X-Men 97, the sequel series coming out on Disney Plus sometime in the next calendar year. So, Matthew, I'm pumped for that show, man. Me too. Me too. I still have to finish this because I, I didn't realize that I didn't finish the old cartoon. Oh, so you actually haven't gone through the whole thing then? No, 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 no. I, oh, I, I, thought, I didn't realize that. Okay, mm -hmm. that's a different dynamic then right there. Mm -hmm. No way. Oh, dude, it's the, the, the last season, eh. <laughs> I heard it was rough. Jay Shot told me it was rough. I was like, he was telling me these things, and I was like, I don't remember any of those. Yeah, and, it and then he, a little rough. That's when we realized that I didn't actually finish the, the series. And they, they also showed the final season episodes – out of the mm -hmm. order they were supposed to be shown in, which didn't help matters. Really? Yeah. They, for some reason, they put the episodes in different orders. A whole lot of bad stuff happened. There were some interesting concepts and stories mm -hmm. in that final season, which I'm hoping we get a payoff for in the, the upcoming X-Men 97, because they are picking up basically where they left off. But yeah, yeah, yeah pump the brakes and just be ex lower the temper the expectations and enthusiasm of the final season, I guess. <laughs> Um, well, sir, we kick off this show every week the same way by talking about the previous week's episode. So, Matthew, if you would, please say the line. Previously, Previously on X-Men. 
There it is. All right. So last week when Jay Shot was on with us, we had the Morlock episode where basically Gene and Scott were on a date. They went down into the sewers to save some cute little mutant kid. Turned out it was a trap. Uh, apparently Callisto wanted them sex with Cyclops and have an heir. It got really weird really quick. Gene thought she was a little girl. The MVP of the episode was the old lady right there showing mm-hmm. the bony finger of judgment. Um, and in the end, Storm was the leader of the Morlocks. Nothing changed really because they stayed there and Wolverine ran away for like the fifth consecutive episode. You missed two things there. Mm-hmm. Storm had a lightsaber fight there in that episode. Yes, lightsaber fight. <laughs> and one of the greatest memes was born in that episode. Yes, it was. I was jealous when 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 Jay Shaw got that <laughs> got to sit down with you on that one. He got it. We were talking about it in, in, the, in the green room beforehand. Mm-hmm. And he had said about looking forward to that episode. And I'm like, dude, it's this one. It's this one. And he got all excited. <laughs> oh. And it also spawned a Mondo figure, right? Yeah. Yeah. And now, like, a lot of people are thinking about picking up more Mondo figures, like, after that whole, the, the Sabretooth was announced. Yeah, that, that, that nearly pulled me in, too. My, my classic yeah. line, my mantra for 2023 has been stay in my lane as much as I can. Yeah, I'm trying to do the same. It's, so it's, it's tough. It's tough, man. And, and that looks freaking great. And plus, I have the I have the 12-inch, well, it's not actually 12 inches, but 12-inch scale Wolverine Marvel Legend, the big guy. Oh, I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at him right now. So I got him at a Burlington Coat Factory for like 20 bucks. So mm-hmm. I'm like, man, he'd actually probably look pretty good with that saber too. So I kind of thought about it. <laughs> yeah. So I heard that there's rumors that they that Hasbro might have like a, a, a new saber tooth coming out in the future, though. A, a, a regular a six inch or a 12 inch? A six inch. They well, they need one. We were talking earlier in the pre show. I'm yeah. looking at the line right now, and that one for the apocalypse wave is, is pretty terrible besides the head sculpt. Yeah, he doesn't really move well. I mean, he's 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 ginormous, but uh, I, I think the head sculpt is, is the best part of that uh, age of apocalypse wave. Yeah, yeah. Again, looking at it, in my detox, the hair looked great, the face looked good. It's Wait, just- are you talking about the uh, the the regular apocalypse wave, the build a figure. Yeah, uh, yeah, the build a figure. Oh yeah, yeah. I had that one too. I actually replaced that one with the uh, the Marvel Selects. Oh, that one is a much superior offering for sure. Yeah, this one. Oh yeah, yeah. That looks a lot better. The body, the body looks better on that. He's just really big, but he 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 ends up making Wolverine look much smaller. So yeah, I guess it works out. Yeah, exactly. It's you got he calls a runt for a reason, right? Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, let's dive into the episode here. So basically we kick off um, right at the end of episode five, continuing here, uh, as we did have a to be continued. And uh, Cyclops and Jean Grey in their leisure clothing are going to thank Wolverine for helping them. And he's gone. And Cyclops with like the quickest emotional change ever goes from like loving Wolverine to being like, how dare he? How (laughs) dare he leave? How can we trust people like him on the team? And and Jean's looking all, all, all guilty. And, and, and Matthew, she says, I can't tell you that he left because of me. Because of me. <laughs> and that's, it was so like, it was, it was a soap opera when she said that. Yeah. And it really was. I mean, we've hit on this love triangle every mm-hmm. week. It's such a crucial part to the show that it's, it's just, <laughs> she's just standing there. She's weeping into her hands. It's like days of our lives. You know, yeah. it's just, it's brutal, brutal emotion. but. Yeah, Cyclops is pissed, and Cyclops is very angsty this episode. We'll get back to that, but then we jump to Wolverine, who's chilling in northern Canada. He says how great it is to be home, and yeah. well, Matthew, he looks happy up there in the north and in the snow. Yeah, and he, he's got you know his whole uh, full skiing gear on. Of course, of course. Uh-huh. However, then we cut away, and we see a very insidious clawed hand holding what looks to be a futuristic uh, Apple TV controller, possibly. <laughs> uh, or, or, or maybe something from a G.I. Joe Classified uh, action figure drone kit. Uh, and we find out that Wolverine's going for a ride, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. How convenient that he managed to just, like, slide right into where where the, the, the explosives were. Well, yeah, man. Well, as Sabretooth says here, Wolverine must be losing a step because years ago, he never would have gotten this close, as you said in the episode. Exactly. exactly. Um, I really, I said this in future, in in prior episodes, again, I I appreciate the animation, but I never really like went through and looked at like scene by scene and clip by clip. I love how they get the zoomed in imagery of Wolverine's face. It's really cool artwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Especially with the shading done. It's very dramatic. 
Yeah, they they do a good job. Now later in this episode, there's some some sketchy moments at the animation, which I'll try to remember to point out. But you know, moments like this really show you they were working hard to give us a really quality product on this show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so Wolverine's taking a dive here. Um, he ends up landing in the snow. Uh, so he's he's a little bit hard up here. Then we see Sabretooth roll in, and of course we're gonna get a classic Wolverine and Sabretooth fight here. Uh, as they're going to go to blows, uh, some claws get thrown, some grimaces get made, but Sabretooth is the biggest trick in the book, the old grab onto the snow, and Wolverine falls off the cliff. Yeah. Oh, sorry, my, my girlfriend is calling me because she forgot that I'm alive tonight. Sorry. <laughs> that happens from time to time. So uh, Wolverine falls off the cliff. Sabretooth is able to basically hang on for dear life, um, and that will basically be the inciting incident that leads to the rest of the episode. So Matthew Wolverine survives, doesn't he? Yeah, of course. He has that he has that uh that that luck, right? Yep. And yep. he has that healing factor. I mean, I guess that comes into play a little bit. Yep. I think I think he says you have a coward's luck, Wolverine, a coward's exactly. luck. Uh I love how Sabretooth is just like snarling through this whole episode too. Mm -hmm. He's constantly growling and snarling. So he decides to chuck an ice boulder for like <laughs> the first time. It is like six times I think in this episode for sure. Yeah. Uh, but his goal is, I guess, to get Wolverine to drown and die. He essentially says, I'll continue to find you. And we get a really great Wolverine quote here, which I'll hold back on, Matthew, because later on that might be my quote of the night. Okay. Try to um, so we jump back to the X-Mansion, and uh, there's, a, there's a conversation going on between Cyclops and Gambit, more like an argument, very angsty Cyclops. Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew, what are they arguing about here? Oh, man, I forgot what they were arguing about. Oh, uh, one of uh, one of Gambit's friends had a tip about Genosha. Yes, there you go, sir. Yes. Can you talk about Genosha a little bit and the, the lore of that in the comics and the cartoon? So from what I remember from the cartoon, at first it wasn't like Magneto's like home base, right? It was actually like where they were trying to capture the mutants, right? Yep, yep, exactly. And where yep. the Sentinels were being built? Yes, sir. So it's essentially a trap for mutants, right? Mm -hmm. So Cyclops very angsty, fighting with Gambit. You know, you shouldn't be spreading rumors, blah, blah, blah. So, of course, Xavier gets involved. And if anybody saw my episode with Pack Photos, um, we have a little meme we've started here where mm -hmm. we get the bony finger of judgment from Professor, Professor Xavier. A bony finger of judgment. There it so is. Here, here we get the – I was very disappointed I saw the hand like this. And then right away, yeah. he gets a bony finger. And he's like, no, Cyclops, you choose three people to go to this beautiful resort. And you'll get no blowback from your teammates on who you pick. Or something like that. Yeah. And uh, I think Jubilee was very excited about going, right? She wanted to be chosen. It's funny you should say that. Look at, first of all, the creepy smile Cyclops gives off here. Yeah. Very creepy yeah. smile. Very and Jubilee cool. is more than elated to be going on this trip. <laughs> yeah man so you nailed it she's pretty pumped so mm -hmm. we're gonna have the the trio of storm gambit and jubilee on this side mission during the episode which obviously launched a much larger story arc throughout the rest of season one mm -hmm. they'll go to genosha to scope things out uh but that takes us back to wolverine so um matthew who finds wolverine here uh it was a bunch of eskimos right that that find them yeah i i i had to google this to be honest i guess they're inuit technically okay yeah yeah. That was the Google machine. Um, and I typed in their names phonetically so I don't botch them too bad. Yeah. We have Kiowak. Yes. And we have Peota. 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 Is that the one who was the that was that was like the old guy? Yes, he's the older dude. He's like the the, the elder of the village, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Kiowak is the younger guy. And um, very much a good thing to do in the show is obviously, you know, addressing like things in society. And I kind of liked, I thought it was cool here where they kind of have the idea of like, when is it time for like the younger generation to mm -hmm. take over for the older generation? You know, when do you change your ways? And there's a lot of that in this episode. Yeah, there definitely was. Yeah. So um, I, I believe the younger guy here actually wanted to trade Wolverine to the cops for money to buy a snowmobile. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah he wanted, I, I, I don't remember what he wanted to buy, but I do remember that he wanted to trade him in. Yeah, he's like, let's just take him to the city and we'll get money for the guy, right? Yeah. So I got I got a kick out of that one for sure. Um, he's just basically looking at it as, let's get this guy out of here. Uh, but the older uh, gentleman's like, no, nope, we're going to keep him. That's not our ways. Um, so he gives him the bony finger of judgment. 
Yep, there it is. <laughs> yep. And of course, we get Sabretooth off in the distance, who is now very pissed off because he realized Wolverine survived with that coward's, coward's luck. luck. Yes, yes. So, Matthew, this brings us to probably one of the more, I'd say, key or important moments of this episode from a societal standpoint. And that is Wolverine wakes up. He's on a slab again. He's always on a slab every episode because he wakes up. Yeah. And he wakes up and he's about to explain why he healed so quickly. And he says something to the effect of, I'm a mute. And he stops. Why does he stop there? Yeah, because they get, you know, they get judged for being mutants. Also, I wanted to point out, why is he in his uniform? Great point. Wasn't he in his uh, <laughs> ski gear before? Yeah, he was in his ski gear before. Yep, yep, yep. And it's funny you mentioned that. I told you earlier we'd point out some flaws in the episode. Yeah. There actually is one with the uniform in the back part of the episode, too. Mm-hmm. So I'll try to point that out if you caught that or not. I did. Um, I did. I, did. I, I caught it when I was uh, re-watching it this morning. So we'll, so we'll address that later. So you're right. There's a uniform issue. Mm-hmm. But there's also this moment where Wolverine realizes these, these Inuit fishermen mm-hmm. don't know what mutants are. Yes. Right? Yeah. So he, he's like, you're very pure people that you don't judge and you don't actually know what we are. Like, he doesn't want to almost, like, spread that narrative to this innocent group of fishermen in northern Canada, which I thought was kind of cool of him. Yeah, I mean, like, not so innocent. One dude wanted to trade him off for a snowmobile. <laughs> the younger generation, right? right. <laughs> if only he knew he could melt Wolverine's bones and make an indestructible snowmobile, right? <laughs> right, right. He could have had the best snowmobile in all of I northern Canada. I don't know if they, if they know the technique of melting adamantium, though. That's the thing, right? Uh, I- I- ancient Inuit secret, huh? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> the elders know all. Um, Four Feathers wanted to mention that the laziness of artists or the lack of communication in the art department on those boards. Yes. Yes. Yep. You could see it was there. And this is early on. It's obviously season one, so they're still figuring their crap out. So speaking of wearing uniforms, Matthew. (laughs) I noticed this in the episode. Storm, in her breezy beach gear, Mm -hmm. Jubilee in her breezy resort gear, and Gambit. (laughs) In his uniform. Full uniform, folks. Full uniform. Just full uniform. And they're supposed to be tourists. Mm-hmm. Cyclops is like, remember, you're tourists. Way to wear your professional attire, buddy. Way to be the guy working way too hard on <laughs> casual Friday. Right, exactly. You know, you're, you're on vacation on the dime of your company, but you're still in a, in a suit. What the hell, right? Yeah, and his suit definitely doesn't have any pockets. It's his trench coat that has the pockets. Yeah, right? exactly. So they're they're in the airport. They're getting ready to head off to. Uh, I keep going to say Muir Island. It's not Muir Island. No, I keep going to say but, that. But it, it it does come into play later on, right? I believe, yep. or is it the following episode? I it's coming up very quickly. We're okay. getting there very quickly. Um, Four Feathers says, uh, "Hey, that's how Gambit rolls." <laughs> oh my gosh! So we jump back to Wolverine, and he essentially says, "Matthew, he's like, hey." I got to do some work to kind of clear the cobwebs. I love how, again, he packed his like basic civilian attire in that backpack. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, didn't he have his uniform in the backpack? Right. He, yes. We see that at the end of the episode, near the end of the episode, I think. Yeah. So why would they choose his uniform to put him back into if they had these clothes? Exactly. Like, again, they're Inuits. They're, they're wearing the same thing every day. I guess they have one outfit. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, like their hunting clothes or their fishing clothing, I guess. Um, they have a boat. Look at that. It has a. It has a. It, it's a. It's a motor. A motorboat. Yeah, motorboat. Oh, I don't know these these people. So um, basically, this is where we begin the series of events that Wolverine continues to embarrass the younger guy here in this, oh, in yeah. this group, right? So. He's trying to act all cool. He's like, it takes experience to handle the nets. Yeah. Wolverine's like, it's all in the wrist, right? Yeah. Well, after he catches everything, right? Yeah. So he catches everything. And what happens to our other guy here, Matthew? All his fish just fall out of the net. <laughs> yep. And he wipes out hardcore. And you can see right here on the screen, mm-hmm. everybody in the boat laughing at him. Yep. Yep. So we get everybody laughing at him here, um, which will set up that resentment throughout the episode. And then it happens right away again. They get back to the to land, and Wolverine's, you know, showing off, carrying all the fish on his shoulders like a tough yeah. guy. He just picks it up like it's nothing and just throws yeah. it up on top. Yeah. I'd, I'd say a sack of potatoes, but I think a sack of potatoes is actually kind of heavy too. So, yeah. 
Uh, wh- and what happens to our other guy here, man? Oh, he try- he's like, oh, that's nothing. I can do it. And he tries to pick it up and he slips and falls and all the fish is on top of him now. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Now that one jacket he has smells like fish. That's all. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure it does anyway from when he messed up on the boat, too. So This is true. He's just doubling down at this point. Oh, this yeah. Fish odor. Um, hey, Mr. Fish odor from Bob's Burgers. There you go. <laughs> um, but yeah, now we get to see all the women of the village laughing at him. Yeah. Everybody's laughing at him. Yep, and, and he's and, not too happy. Yep, and he views Wolverine as the reason for all that. So he has that resentment, right? Mm-hmm. So he's pretty pissed off. So that's going to lead to some issues later. And then we get Wolverine, and I love this scene, man. I love this scene. <laughs> oh, when they're celebrating because of yeah. the big catch walk, that they had. Yeah, walk us through this. What are they talking into doing here? So um, they they said they're telling Wolverine how happy the the village is for you know all the fish that they caught for the night. So they're celebrating there. There's a campfire, right? Yep. 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 And then, uh, I forgot what he says to him or does he say something, say something under his breath as he passes Wolverine? Yeah. He, he, he yeah, he's definitely shunning him here. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, he's going off for his little spiritual walk. Cause he's all pissed off. Um, yeah. And then Wolverine, we get him in the sheet and they're throwing him up in the air, which by the way, with that adamantium skeleton, he is not really light. He, he he's heavy, right? Thank you. We were talking about that last week at some point too. Where like in the movie, it's it's the dichotomy of how different the movie character is. I think to the cartoon adaption. Yeah. Well, that's also another thing. Is like in the cartoon, they always took out Wolverine really quickly because he's a very violent character. And I mean, this is a kids show. Yeah. You know, his claws are meant for you know slicing and dicing people. Yeah, and I think all he, ever sli- he only slices and dices like physical objects, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, at robots, you know, the guns that shoot lasers and not bullets. The, the, the ore they need later in the episode to get home from the water. That mm-hmm. They have extra of, thankfully. So so Kia Walk, I think it was, is out on the walk, and uh, he runs into Sabretooth, but he doesn't know what Sabretooth is. He thinks he's something different than a mutant. Yeah, Uh was it what what was the word that he said i forgot was it like was it like a snow demon yeah or, snow demon so like that snow demon Something like that or yeah snow demon so he, which would make sense because these people obviously have a lore they have legends mm-hmm. in their area of the world so he uh, begins to imagine saber tooth is a snow demon but this is where the illusion uh and, and the innocence is worn off because he finds out that mutants are an actual thing in the world yes yeah so so Sabretooth works him over, and he says something to the effect of, I smell Wolverine all over you. A friend of my enemy is my enemy. And then he basically, like, sides with Sabretooth here, right? Yeah, he's like, oh, uh, he's not he's not a friend. You know, he, he hates Wolverine, too. Yep, yep. So he's like, all, all the – he well, I, was, I was the person. I was the one everybody looked to as a leader. And now mm. all the women he, – he actually specifically says, now all the women laugh at me. Yes. Um, which made me think of, is it uh, Billy Madison? They're all going to laugh at you. <laughs> <laughs> and you throw throwing the, po- the point. Yes, with the point. So they have, they, they, they form a, a momentary truce here. Mm-hmm. And then we jump back to good old Genosha mm-hmm. with their very friendly looking resort here. Um, I, I noticed here, and I could be wrong, Matthew, I, I know that the image isn't very large on the on the spreadsheet, but the yeah, spreadsheet. Listen to me on the Google slide. I feel like the animation for the resort isn't as sharp as the animation for like when they show the mansion, for instance. No, I think that was just like a quick sell that they threw in there, right? Probably. Yeah, it, it definitely isn't isn't something that's as advanced or you know as worked through. Um, that caught my eye, but we ended up walking in the Genosha. And good old Gamble looking for a deal. What's he pick up here? <laughs> Ask about our mutant discount. I love it. <laughs> Maybe we save 10%. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that line. Oh man, it's it's great. But then we get this this this, this uh, I'll I'll say it this way, this this is this Richard behind the uh the table. <laughs> um and he he just looks creepy from the mustache right away. Oh yeah. Me. Yeah, I I'm feel not, like in the '90s, everybody who's a bad guy had a mustache like that. Yeah, and I'm not knocking mustache. I love a good mustache. Don't get me wrong, but this this guy just looks like he's evil right away. I mean, look at the lighting too. It he, he's lit from underneath. Yeah, yeah. They're they're telling you that what's going on here. 
So he has a little computer there. He realizes they're mutants and he gives them bungalow 12, which is a special bungalow for them later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're going to, we'll come back to that. That's that side, uh, side story, the plot. So Kiowak basically challenges Wolverine to go hunting out on the water. Um, and Peyote is like, you don't need to do it. And Wolverine, I think, senses it. I, I, doesn't he say something to Wolverine to tip him off about Sabretooth here? I think he smells it on him. Oh, that's right. I didn't think of the smell. Yeah, I think he's like the he. I don't think Wolverine said anything about Sabretooth at first when he challenged him, but he did have that look on his face like he smelled something. <laughs> uh, there, there's Alyssa, my GF. I forgot you were on. <laughs> It's okay, sweetheart. I'll give you a call afterwards. <laughs> but yeah, that's a good call on the senses, man. So Wolverine knows what's happening here. And Kiowak thinks that he's leading Wolverine into a trap. But unfortunately, what actually happens, Machu? Does any, does any like slash the oar so now they can't get back even if it was a trap? <laughs> he slashes the oar, which was dumb. <laughs> and, and then back at the fishing camp, it yeah. turns out Sabretooth just destroyed the whole thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like yeah. Uncle Owen and Aunt Peru. Just Well, no, because the, the, the people didn't die. He just burnt the village. Truth. So not yeah. like Uncle Owen and Aunt Peru. That's right. He has plans for the people later on. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, so he basically, you know, get gets, gets double-crossed by Sabretooth. And we get a great Wolverine moment where he's all like, there is no peace for me. <laughs> He has the worst lines. It's, it's just so over the top. And yeah. I love it. You know, rose tinted glasses and whatnot. But <laughs> there is no peace for me. I love it. So um, I love when he also pops the claws here to go after the guy he blames initially. Yeah. And then he feels guilty about it. And then when he pops the claws, he's like, you didn't do nothing. Yeah. This just, this wasn't your fault. This wasn't yeah. you. <laughs> so um so now he realizes and this is what you mentioned earlier about having the costume in the backpack right yeah the costume was in the backpack i guess it was on top so they just they 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 took that first and put that on him because he was in wet clothes so yeah and, and when they have looked at his like when they be kind of freaked up by the mask too like why are there these horn things on your mask i guess maybe but then then again like if they don't have really like contact with the you know other civilizations or the cities and stuff they probably don't they they're it's probably the new fashion to them yeah. you know you, you do you whatever you wear right yeah, yeah it's, it's we're not gonna judge we're fishermen from the north must um, be european or something yeah we know not of your city ways right um so we so wolverine you know here's something it turns out to be and you walk i, I think every time i said that guy's name I've said it a different way, by the way. I apologize. Uh, I, stopped I, I, I haven't even tried to say his name, so I, I give you props. <laughs> I stopped looking at my phone for the pronunciation guide. It's kind of bleh now. Um, so good old, good old Innie. Um, Innie, there you go. Innie and Wolverine are, get out there, and they find Sabretooth. And essentially, like, Sabretooth has everybody tied to the ice. He's going to blow them up. He wants to fight Wolverine. And we get an interesting character moment here, Matthew. Where Wolverine actually tries to basically like make up with Sabretooth. Yeah. He yeah. tries to talk him down. Yeah. He, he, what's he say? Something like, I don't know who started it. Let's just bury it. Yeah. 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 And, and, and Sabretooth, of course, is like, oh, <laughs> I'm very punny as well. And he's like, oh, don't worry. We'll bury you all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Clever Sabretooth. Sabretooth is actually first in his class in high school. You wouldn't know. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. Where did he find all those explosives? Did he just there, there's like a random store somewhere around there, or he has a stash? He travels he, with them. I, you know. He doesn't have any pockets. I'll tell you right now. You could look at his costume. Uh, it doesn't look like there's room, unless it's like, you know. I wait. Have you seen Spider Verse yet? I have not yet seen it, but if you want okay. to say something, you can. That's fine. No, 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 no. no. I won't. It, it, was a, it was it was a joke. It was a joke from there. I won't say it. Okay. Um. But like, yeah, he has no pockets. There's no space for that. Um. And also, how the how did he tie those people down like that? I thought that too. Like a little bit of resistance here from the males of the tribe, and maybe it's a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I mean, like he has them all lined up on one uh, on like that patch of ice, and clearly he had to wrap it around mm -hmm, mm -hmm. three times because it's like one's on the upper part of the body, one's in the middle, and then the and then another rope is on the legs. Maybe they were like, "Oh snap, 
snow demon, do what he says. Yeah. Oh, let's tie ourselves down. Yeah, like just don't eat our souls. Yeah. Just, we'll lay in the ice till our friends get here. Okay. Help. Maybe maybe it's because they believe he's a snow demon. Exactly. We so we're going with the snow demon philosophy and and, and, and the theme on this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, is there toxic snow in Canada? I don't know, but did you did you get did you hear about what happened here in New York from from what happened in Canada with the fire? Oh, we're dealing with it here too, but oh, New York yeah. looked like freaking Mars. Uh, it was it was so weird. Like I woke up like, yesterday, and like the sun usually like beaming through my blinds, but the sunrise yesterday was red. It's like I woke up like I was Kramer <laughs> with the red light coming through his window. Yes. <laughs> I love that reference, man. Was it Kenny Rogers or something like that? <laughs> yeah, it was Kenny Rogers. That's freaking phenomenal. Dude, I don't even know, man. Like, yeah, some mornings you just wake up, look out the window and go, is today it? Is this really the end? <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. I'm like, this must be it. Yeah, this, this is this is it. This is, yeah. you see the horses galloping by and, you know, it's, it's like in the <laughs> Simpsons, the Easter episode, you know, it's the end at, of the world. And at this point, it's like, all right, it's been like, two two weeks three weeks maybe you know we're we're due for something in the news right like something's happening yeah man it's hey don't get me going on the ufo thing right now oh Here's god no, I, let's, let's stick to let's stick to the show i don't <laughs> i'll send you a link later my friend <laughs> okay <laughs> um all right so toxic snow apparently in canada because yes. Tooth just snows just snows throws snow in wolverine's eyes yeah you would think this was like acid from Batman, from Joker's freaking flower. Oh, yeah. my eyes! And he's supposed to be one of the best fighters. He couldn't dodge that? And it's water. It's frozen it's, water. Yeah. yeah. You just you just wipe it out. It happens to me in the shower every morning. I water my eyes with shampoo. Yeah. I wipe it out. Exactly. Man, I don't know. So I guess whatever. So they belabor the fight. Wolverine's actually about to lose mm -hmm. until good old uh, Kiwi. K K Kiwi. Kiwok tackles yeah. Sabretooth. And what does Sabretooth grab to throw? <laughs> Another, like, ice boulder. Yes. He loves ice. Two things Sabretooth loves. Ice boulders and explosives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so Wolverine falls off. He sticks a claw in the snow. So he's hanging out. Um, yeah. And you mentioned how Wolverine's like an, like an experienced good fighter, right? Yeah. How does he beat Sabretooth here? He moves. <laughs> he moves out of the way. Why didn't he do that with the snowball? Ah, right? <laughs> right? It's all you had to do was move, dude. Look, like, look you know, at Sabretooth's feel... face, though. Look at oh, his yeah. face. He's like, oh, snap. Like, any future cartoon after this where Wolverine is fighting Sabretooth, I just want to be like, dude, just duck and let him jump off something. Yeah. That's what I gotta do. That's what I gotta do. Um, so Sabretooth falls off until we see him later in the show. Later in the series, I should say. Yeah. Um, Wolverine and Kuwak spring into action. They cut the explosives out. And we get a very nice moment here with Wolverine where, unfortunately, it turns out all the Inuit people are now going to move to the city. Yeah. But but Wolverine is a nice exchange here. And a, a certain F word is used towards Wolverine that he appreciates. What's he calling here that starts with an F? He calls him a... Friend? Friend. You got it, man. He calls I was him like, a... it's either friend or family. <laughs> he calls him a friend which is which is part of friends our family right yeah. and uh yeah he's like you called me friend yeah so throughout the episode we had this ongoing arc matt where it was like i'm at peace i'm not at peace i feel at peace i i i you know uh uh the older guys like you'll you'll get there when you need to get there sort of thing and yeah it's this oh, nice because yeah. he was like i wish i could tell you you know like why i'm here or whatever and then that's when he was saying like when you when the time is right, you'll tell me well, if you need to or something like that, right? That was when they were sitting down. You yep, you nailed it exactly, man. Um, Four Brother says, "Oh man, UFOs? Are you kidding me? The wife and I are constantly watching these crazy light phenomenon." Four Feathers will talk. <laughs> we'll talk. Um, so that ends that part of the story, Matthew. So now we jump back to Genosha and good old Bungalow Twelve. Mm -hmm. And who's knocking on the door of Bungalow Twelve, Matthew? Oh, it's a trap. It's a trap. That's right. So first we get all of the Genosian army, basically, I guess, mm -hmm. who, are, who are presumably gassing the mutants because we don't know right now why they're doing it. We'll find out later, obviously. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but they gas everybody out of the building. So they run out. Gambit blows out the door. And who's waiting outside, Matthew? Sentinel. Freaking Sentinels. The last time we saw the Sentinels was when the president shut them down. Mm -hmm. uh, and Trask basically uh, was with Cameron Hodge. And he said, pack your things. We're going somewhere else. Well, we find out where they went. Mm -hmm. So well, this go ahead, sir. Also, why, why is Jubilee back in her uniform? Thank you. I, thank you. <laughs> yes, she was in her breezy, happy resort clothes, right? Yeah. She gets back in the uniform. Yeah. It's only Storm who's, you know, like, you know, actually treating it like a vacation. Yeah. It's, she's following orders. And she's just yeah. told to be a tourist. Um, yeah. I forgot to point out the, the other flaw with Wolverine's costume. The sleeves. Yes, sir. Want to explain that to everybody? Yeah. So there's like a, a frame or two where he's walking towards Sabretooth in the snow. And all of a sudden, you see his arms are all completely yellow. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no skin tone at all. Yep. It's like he was wearing his Under Armour, and then he took it off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... I think that was definitely, like, a miscommunication with the... But it was a single frame, right? Because, like, I remember uh, when, when they did this crossover with Spider-Man, there was uh, inconsistencies with the, with the ink game, too. Yeah. It, it happens. I mean, again, mm -hmm. you're... It's just going to happen. <laughs> it's just yeah. the best way to put it. You know, people communicating and things like that. But all in all, you know, it didn't affect my opinion of the episode. I enjoyed it. I I really liked, obviously, all the Wolverine. So typically, Matthew, I have a, a cameo section. There really weren't any cameos. So that's maybe the Sentinel here. Yeah, I think it was just the Sentinels. Uh, was Gwee. Did uh, I think I'm, I'm thinking I'm thinking ahead. I'm I I was thinking Guy Rich was in it, but that's an episode later, right? That's what episode yeah. after. Oh, and actually, I misspoke. I said Cameron Hodge. I meant Gyrick. I'm sorry about that. Oh, okay. Yeah, Ga Gyrick would have been with the Sentinel program, not Cameron yeah. Hodge. Hodge was the attorney representing Beast in the second episode. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who also comes back later on in the show as a back guy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so really not many cameos this week. So, Matt, that brings us to the end here where I got to ask you a couple questions. Sir, who is your favorite character in this episode? I mean, I guess... I guess it's Wolverine. I mean, he's the. This was actually like one of the first episodes where they didn't just like completely take him out. Yep. You know, they let him. They had. They gave him a little more breathing room. So, like, you got to know Wolverine. Like, when watching this cartoon, I didn't have like Wolverine wasn't a favorite character of mine because it's like you know they they really watered him down compared to like how he was in the comics, yep. and then they really focused on him more in the movies. Yeah, you're very, very, very good point. Mm. That's how they spun that. Um, I'll add for my favorite character. And I'll check the pronunciation guide again here. I'm going to go with the old guy, Peyota. Peyota. Okay. Yeah. The wise elder who in the end has to say, we're going to move on with the younger generation. Because mm -hmm. often I feel like the much older guy at work because everybody's younger than me now. And it freaks me out big time. <laughs> so uh, at least one of the older guys, I should say. This is my department. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite quote from this episode, sir? I guess the one he talks about, he's not going to have any peace. <laughs> There's no peace There's for no me. Peace for me. <laughs> this emotes it. That's going to be us at Comic-Con uh, yeah. Comic at the toy, toy show. On Saturday yeah. when, like, we're looking for a certain figure. And they're all gone. Like yeah. the last mythic legion of horse is gone. No. <laughs> There's no horses for me. Horses for me. Uh, that'll be me. If I, I'm buying my tickets at the door, obviously. So if there's no tickets for me. I'll be yelling that. Um, I think it'll be fine. Um, yeah. Trying to remember when I went the first time. I think that yeah, there there's probably a line, but I think this is this is a venue that they used to be at, mm -hmm. and that they're going back to because it's bigger. So I don't know actually, because I'm used to them being at, at uh, uh the Wayne 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 New Jersey. Yeah, because usually they're near like the other toy thing. I think mm -hmm. or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So my my favorite quote. I'm gonna have to go with. When Wolverine's floating on the ice after Sabretooth like trashes him. Yeah. And he says something to the effect of, at least I'm not to hear you run your mouth anymore or like <laughs> whatever. So something to that effect, right? Yeah. He's like, I'd rather die in the Arctic waters than hear you talk. Yeah. We've all been there, co workers, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, how about a favorite moment in the episode? Oh, favorite moment. I guess. <laughs> Hmm. Well, I guess it's like when Wolverine's fishing and, and he's just like, he just show he's showing up the other guy. 
<laughs> yeah, he just from the moment he's just a natural. Mm -hmm. It's all in the wrist. It's all in the wrist. It's all in the wrist. Man, fa favorite moment. I felt like the previous episodes there were. You mentioned like lack of action. Mm -hmm. There was a lot more action in previous episodes. So, you know, this one there's not as many action moments. But I'm probably gonna have to go with when, which is not an action moment, when Gambit picks up that little ten percent sign. <laughs> And he's like, ask, ask about our mutant discount. Yeah. Save yeah. 10%. No. Yeah. Save some money. Um, he's thrifty from New Orleans. It's expensive oh, yeah. down there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So uh, any overall thoughts on the episode? Did you enjoy it? You know, was it too dry for you? You know, just overall thoughts. I, I enjoyed it. I you know, it took them out of like the, the, the city scenes that they usually uh it with oh wait, there is a cameo. Or is it, see now I'm thinking maybe this might have been the following episode. There was a cameo from Cable, wasn't there? He was not in this one. Oh, he's in the in the one after. Yeah, un, un, unless he's like literally in the background when they get there. But I I know I know he's involved in the Genosha story big time. Yeah. Okay. Which right, which so honestly brings questions into my brain because I feel like that doesn't jive up with his story, his backstory later on in the series. Because mm -hmm. obviously he comes back from the future. Yeah. So they never, it's almost like they, I guess they didn't actually know they were having a season two. So like they wanted to yeah. use them. And then later on they, they found a way to backtrack it. Right. Hey, Winger Lose in the house. What's up, man? What's up, Winger Lose? What's going on, sir? Uh, but yeah, again, I enjoyed the episode as well. Definitely a different pace to this than previous ones, but every episode can't be constant fighting. They have to obviously put in these layered character moments too yeah yeah for sure so but yeah that will be episode six uh matthew if you could sir please tell the people where they can find you what are your socials and what's the next project that you're working on um so you can find me on instagram at matthew toy uh i do have a tiktok that i'm not really active with but i do post there some from time to time it's matthew toy six because i actually got locked out from my original account so that i can get back in um and then you can also find me here on youtube under the same name matthew toy uh i mean i guess the next projects that i'm working on like we got toy con on saturday and sunday j shot is going to be there on saturday um i'll be we we both have a table there so uh we'll be sitting we'll be right next to like chubsy wubsy and d blake um and i think we're pretty close to the horseman table Oh, very cool. I think from what I heard last time. That'll be great because a lot of foot traffic in that area. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we're going to try to have like a little podcast thing on our table. So that way we can just chit chat with people. Oh, that's coming to the con. And, and then please tell us about your Wednesday live streams. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jay Sean and I have a show on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Um, you know, we have a guest on every week. And it's called Between Two Sentinels. Excellent. Excellent. As I said, always... I, I finally programmed myself. I mentioned I'm an AEW fan. Yes. So you come on right around eight o'clock, I believe. So I, I usually if I do a live at seven, I always want to be done that I'm not interfering with other lives. Mm -hmm. But then I am in AEW mode. So finally now for the last three weeks, I've trained myself to, to be watching between two Sentinels on my phone and also watching wrestling on TV. So I can basically enjoy both. Yeah. I mean, like we welcome the replays. You don't have to be watching on live, but we, you know, we appreciate that. So, well, I, I always like seeing the live in the moment if I can, even yeah. if it's the first like, half an hour or so. And um, then you can always chime in, you know, exactly. Say hello and get the algorithm churning a little bit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Let's we'll try to help each other out. Yeah, precisely, man. So that's, that's exactly it. So yeah, check out the Wednesday show. I did put up on the screen here, ToyCon, New Jersey, this coming Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, I keep forgetting the name of the town. What the hell is it? Persephone. Um, Persephone. Thank you. So mm -hmm. Persephone, New Jersey, hours on Saturday, uh, early bird starting at nine, general admission at 10. I think it's 20, 25 or 20 for a ticket to get in. There it is. Yeah. It's sa Saturday admission is 20. Yeah. 25 for early bird. Sunday, there's early bird, same time, I guess. And then uh, 15 for regular. Um, also, you can do a VIP unlimited access both days for 35. And I think that's all at the door. I don't think there's any online tickets for this. Yeah, I don't think there's any online tickets. Yeah, it's all at the door. And you've been to the show before, right? Yeah, they, they usually have one like around this time, and then they have one in the fall. Okay. But like I said, I think they, they, they switched to this new this venue because it's bigger. 
Saturday. So I'm looking forward to it. I'll be there as well on Saturday with that with Lissa, my, my girlfriend. Yeah. Um, I haven't been to this one before, so I'm pretty pumped for it. Okay. Yeah. No, it was yeah. fun. It's, yeah, it's, um, I mean, it's more fun now that like we are actually like, uh, we know more people in the community rather than just like, oh, I got to I gotta hunt for toys. You get to say <laughs> hi to other people, you know? Exactly, man. That's And that's the best part of this is that it's a community. We all get to talk. And mm-hmm. now that we can all actually go to shows again, that's awesome. It was, it's always nice. A lot of us got our starts on YouTube when we were kind of like shut in, obviously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's nice now because you go to these shows, we all develop this awesome network of cool people we're friends with. Mm-hmm. And we can see each other at these shows. Yeah, like Jason and I joke about this all the time, but like uh, most of my friends that I, you know, I grew up with that I was still hanging out with as an adult, like, you know, after like during the pandemic, I didn't really see them on the daily anymore. And I started talking to everybody else in the community more on the daily basis. Yep. You know? Yep. I, I, I completely agree. I always mention how Toy Amigos was doing the daily shows. Yes. And that really got me more into like the community itself because. Mm-hmm. You start off being a newbie, then you're recognizing people's names, people are greeting you in the chat, then you start mm-hmm. to watch some of their content, and it grows from there, and you get to know people just like they're your next door neighbor. Yeah, and I think we, it, it hit us, and I think it was Legion's Con, right? Mm-hmm. When everybody was at Legion's Con, we didn't know that everybody was at Legion's Con, and we're all bumping into each other saying hello, and you know, that was yeah. where I first met you and Dante. I was going to say, because I think Jay shot fixed the figure that got knocked over on a table or something like that. Yeah, I think it was actually like the biblical Avengers table, right? <laughs> yeah. I was like terrified. I was like, I'm yeah. not touching that. And he's like, I got it. Don't worry. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, guys, let's walk away. I don't want to. <laughs> Jay shot has a Jay, Jay shot usually has a tendency to knock things, but he didn't knock it over. Actually, he was, he was able to, he was actually able to save the table of figures. He was. And it was funny because actually within like a 10 foot radius there, you had you and Jay shot. Who mm-hmm. I just met that day, Dante, who obviously I knew, mm-hmm. Just Jay Hernandez, who I just met that day in person. Yeah, uh, Dario was there from Toy Migos. Yeah, he, I, uh, I believe he snuck in or had somebody's pass. Yeah, so he yeah. was there, and it was just uh, Ron Century Mad Collector, the Toy Hunter, was there. Mm-hmm. Um, just Archie, just uh, NJ3. I mean, so many people that are just and now from there. the West Coast too, like uh, um, Art Man Customs, uh, uh, Nico Hodge, yeah. and then who else was there? Uh, Nate. Yep. Uh, oh yeah, Nasty Nate. Nate was there. Yeah, yeah. Nate, Nasty Nate was there. Uh, 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 is his first name Jared Toybro? I think so. Yeah, I think it's Jared Toybro was there. I didn't get a chance to talk to him very much. I right? didn't get to. T- yeah, but and everybody was, was like hovering around like D Blake's table, which was really yeah. cool. It was that was that was a lot of fun. So yeah, looking forward to that again mm-hmm. uh, this upcoming year, bigger venue. But yeah, this Saturday. Uh, Toy Con, New Jersey. Very excited to be there. I got to get you and Jay shot for a Con Convos video too. Yes, and you, you know what? We, we like I said, we'll have our equipment there to you know have like a little podcast area. So definitely sit down and chat with us there. Yeah, definitely, little man. So all right, everybody, we're getting ready to tie it up there. So as we said earlier, uh, please check out Matthew. Please check out all of his socials. Uh, check out him and uh, Jay Shot's Wednesday night show uh, eight, at 8 p.m. between two Sentinels with the new sign that I love. There it is, sir. This is from Bearded Build, so check him out on Instagram. Check him out, sir. Thank you again so much for being Thank here you. tonight. I know you're a busy guy, so I appreciate you taking your time to sit down with us and talk about this great animated show that influences us all so much. So, oh, yeah. Thank you so much. So everybody, if you're new, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free for you. doesn't cost you anything. Helps to grow the channel. Show me in the March to 5,000 subscribers. Go ahead and hit that bell for notifications. Then we can actually notify you and tells you when we post new content here on the channel, like our weekly toy and reviews and live streams. Leave a comment down below. If the like, like. Yes, thank you. And for daily toy content, daily toy updates, try checking us out over at Instagram and Twitter at disavowed underscore 12. Hey, Matthew. If you're going toy hunting this week, Try to remember the three P's of the toy hunt. Patience, persistence, most of all, politeness. Take care, everybody. Stay healthy. And Matt should I'll be seeing all of you at the pegs. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Matt. Thank you.